Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 57 of Be With Me. We're in season three, and we're at the cross, and Jesus has died. And today we're going to learn about the burial and the burialers, the people who buried Jesus. I'm going to read from Luke chapter 23, and uh, I'll bring in some of the other details that come from the other Gospels. This is 2350. Now, there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man who had not consented to their decision and action, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. He took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed him and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. All right, so let's let's talk about this guy, Joseph of Arimathea. We have to talk about him because he's mentioned nowhere else in the Bible other than the burial of Jesus. He's in all four of the gospel. We know that he is a uh, member of the council, that is the Sanhedrin. That was the body of Jews that voted with some sort of a nighttime quorum to convict Jesus of blasphemy, send him to Pilate, and then get the whole crucifixion thing rolling. We found out in Matthew that he is rich. Now, why is that important? Well, Isaiah 53 says that he made his grave a prophecy about Jesus with the rich man in his death. And that's how Joseph of Arimathea is prophesied about in the book of Isaiah. And then he is uh, introduced to us here. So we get to, to meet this guy. We find here from this gospel in Luke that he's a good man, he's a righteous man, and that he had not consented to the decisions and not consented to the actions. So this was not a unanimous uh a quorum that they had. I think the the number was they had to get 23 out of the 70 uh, guys to uh, consent to this conviction. And then we find out he was looking for the kingdom of God, which is a cool thing. We find out in Mark that he was uh, respected. And Matthew tells us that he was actually a believer. Now, John said he was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews. So we find out that he was afraid. And then um, the other detail in John, which is kind of neat, is that Nicodemus also joins him. Now, Nicodemus is a great uh, favorite of mine from episodes 209, 10, 11, and 12. And we find out that Nicodemus brings 75 pounds of spices, which were incredibly expensive. If you buy them at Walmart today, it's 100 and $39,000. So I would direct you to those. Those are some of my favorite episodes of all time. Okay. So we find out that that uh, Joseph of Arimathea was afraid. He, they, he was afraid of the Jews. And we found that he was also afraid of Pilate. We, and these are both very rational fields. These are both very powerful organizations and powerful people. And he had to take courage to go to Pilate. Now, Pilate was surprised. John gives all the details about him, them breaking the thieves' legs and piercing Jesus' side. And then he sends for the centurion to check and see if this is true. And he asks for the body. One of the gospels says that it's actually a corpse of Jesus. So then <clears throat> Joseph of Arimathea takes it down, wraps it in a linen shroud. <coughs> Matthew tells us that the linen shroud was clean. So there's this this dignity and value that is added to Jesus after the shame of the cross and the suffering of the cross. So then what happens? So then he lays it in a tomb. We find out that it's nearby. Nobody had ever been laid in it. It's in a garden. It's relatively close at hand. And we find out that from Matthew that it's his own tomb. So uh, Joseph of Arimathea, perhaps he was a bit on the aging side when he was thinking about it. So he cuts a stone tomb, has someone chisel out in the rock, 
a tomb for himself and then generously, I suppose, gives it to uh, to Jesus. Then we find some heroes of the resurrection, which is Mary Magdalene, another favorite of mine. And another Mary, uh, who's the mother of Joseph, probably the same as Joseph, that's from the Gospel of Matthew, and they're watching, and they find out, and apparently the 75 pounds of uh, spices that Nicodemus brings are not enough because they bring spices on Sunday morning. All right, so when is this all happening? So this is the day of preparation. That is preparation for the Sabbath. The Sabbath is Saturday. This is Friday. So this is Good Friday. This is the last few minutes of of uh, the sunlight of Good Friday. And that's why they broke the legs of the thieves and got, got them off the cross so they wouldn't be there on sundown of Friday as it moves into uh, their Saturday. So what do we find out here? We have Joseph, we have Nicodemus, we have these great women, we have Pilate and the centurion all coming together. So we have a man who's looking for the kingdom of God. He's a secret disciple. He's got some fears, rightly so, of Pilate. He's got fears of the Jews. And he goes public in a big way and goes to Pilate. Um, It's one of the earliest believers that we know about. We find out that he's Jewish. He's rich. He's respected. He uses his platform and influence to have access to the Sanhedrin, and more specifically, his influence to have access before Pilate. He kind of marshals his courage, and he goes from kind of looking for the kingdom to, to going doubling down on the kingdom. He goes public, and we find out he's a disciple and a believer and a courage. So maybe t- today or whatever, it, it, maybe the day is for you that you've been a secret disciple and you want to go public and courage. I was thinking about baptism as one of the things that uh, makes a believer go from kind of the secret, believing, thinking, maybe acting a little bit, and then they go very, very public. So what an encouragement. This man, Joseph of Marathia, we never hear him about again, hear him, hear about him again, and he is one of the heroes of the, the, the death of, burial, which is big today, and eventually the resurrection of Jesus. What a great guy. It was nice to meet him. Uh, Like I said before, we'll probably have to buy this guy lunch when we get to heaven. Thanks for listening. I'll see you tomorrow.